YouTube, it's Marita from The Nurse Lounge. And I wanted to say thank you to all my new subscribers. I My channel is growing exponentially. And for those of you who do not know me, um, again, my name is Marita. I'm a registered nurse. I've been a nurse for 15 years. I am a OBGYN, well baby nurse. I work PRN at the hospital. I am a nurse educator. I do have my master's in nursing education. This channel is primarily a nursing channel. I am currently in school to get my doctoral degree in executive leadership and I'm supposed to graduate in May of 2020. So anyway, thank you for joining us here at this channel. I am greatly appreciative of you being here and I aim to really give you what nursing really is. I aim to give you nursing, a nursing perspective from a truly research-based, evidence-based perspective not purely just based on opinion. However, I do um, have times where I say, this is just my opinion on this, or this is how I feel on this. And I will say that prior to whatever it happens to be, it wouldn't be just, I don't believe in having videos just to say, rant and rave about things that I know nothing about. And I find a lot of videos on here on YouTube and nursing is just about clout. It's not really about what true nursing profession is really like. I will tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly and why I'm still here. So anyway, if you happen to like that kind of content, you really want to be a nurse and want to know what true nursing is really about, then this is the the, the channel for you. Um, in addition to that, I am plus size. I'm on a plus size journey, weight loss journey, um, fitness journey. So I do talk about that and I do try on hauls and things like that. So if you want to see that, and I love skincare, makeup, beauty, hair, you know, all those things that we as women love. So, um, I definitely have something for almost everyone, almost everyone. Anyway, that's what this video is about. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this video. I wanted to do a really quick video on a nursing school story. So as a nurse educator myself, I know what I expect of my students and I try not to be the instructor that I had back in nursing school in which she was so intimidating. So just as a reference, I've been a nurse for 15 years. So I'm referring to something that happened probably back in 2000 and I graduated in 2004. So this had to be in 2003 or 2004. That's the, the last semester of nursing school. Um, it was adult health two rotation, which adult health two is med surge two or whatever y'all call it, your critical care component. Um, ER, whatever y'all call it in your, your, uh, your program, we called it adult health too. So that's what kind of things we did. We did, you know, um, ER, we did same day surgery, critical care, and of course med surge as well, but it was the specialties within that med surge, uh, arena. So that's what I had. So let me tell you about the day that I got a clinical unset, the one day um, in nursing school for my whole nursing career, a nursing school career, the one time I got a clinical unsat and it was in my very last semester of nursing school. So if you want to hear about that, you have to stay tuned. All right. So let's go ahead and jump right on in. So this video, I don't want to make this long or whatever, because I tend to, I tend to be very thorough and have long videos, but I want to do something where for nursing students who see I survived, you know, my clinical onset, I have not always been the greatest nurse uh, or student. I was not a bad student. So I will say that I was not a bad student. I never cheat. I didn't cheat. I came to class on time. I came to all my classes. I didn't miss one class um, one day because my daughter at the time was starting kindergarten that day, that, yeah, that day. So I did miss that. We were not allowed to miss class for any reason. You had to be dead, sick or in the hospital. If you had to be dead or in the hospital, um, pretty much is only two reasons why you missed class or clinical back then. That's how it was dead or in the hospital. So when I told them I wanted to be out for my daughter's, um, first day of kindergarten, which she will never get that day back. That was a day that was not good, but I had to do what I had to do. I was not gonna miss my daughter's first day of kindergarten, but that's not what this video is about. So my first unsat, I want to talk to you about what happened. Um, how it was and you know how I came out of it so this is a story time all right so we're gonna take you back to I want to say I can't remember the month but I remember it being spring semester of 2004 I graduated 
in 2004. So I graduated that year. Um, but it was spring semester 2004. My last clinic, my last rotation for um, the nursing program. And I had I was taking adult health too, like I said, and I had one of the strictest and a most difficult clinical instructors or instructors that you could ever have. She was one of the ones who were like, oh my gosh, please don't let me get. And of course, that's who I got. She was an older lady. She had these piercing blue eyes and she had gray hair. And when she squinted those eyes at you, I mean, she would do like, like this, you knew, you knew that, yeah, yeah, you knew you was in trouble. So, this is the situation, what had happened. Went to clinical that day and um, I had a patient who was a quadriplegic patient. He was a 23 year old um, motor, motorcycle accident quadri quadriplegic patient. So when you're quadriplegic, that means from here down, you are paralyzed. So he was my patient. Um, I ended up having him for about two days, two or three shifts, two different days we went to the hospital. So it wasn't that I wasn't used to him per se, but I didn't know what to do with a with someone who was a you know quadriplegic. He was 23, I think around that same time period. I was probably see I graduated. I was probably 26 years old, I want to say. I was 26 around that age. So we were around the same age. And so I had never, you know, taken care of a male patient so young. Um and just just it was just difficult. So anyway. I was taking care of him. I was doing my head to toe assessment. I learned how he communicated. So he had a, I don't know what it's called. If y'all know what it's called, put it down below. But basically it, a version of a call light where he could use his mouth to um, push or to do something to, to blow. I don't know what it was, but it was a, that's how he was able to push the call light to say he needed something. And I was already in the room anyway because I was too afraid to leave him alone. And so the tech came in to do his bath. So she's like, I'm gonna help you do his his AM care. So I was like, okay. So we go to do his AM care and I, in the tech, he was on a vent. Okay. He was on a vent and he had a trach on a vent, Foley, bed sores. I mean, we're talking about, you know, a total care patient. Um, very much alert, very much alert, but the rest of the body, you had to do everything for him. So, um, she was like, let's give him a bath real quick. And then that way she could go on, you know, giving her other patients a bath. So anyway, she disconnected when she went to go do something to move or get everything together. She disconnected him from the vent and he could, could not breathe in my mind. And the first thing I do, now y'all know you're supposed to stay with your patient. First thing I do is hooping and hollering and run out the room. I'm like, oh my gosh, he can't breathe. He can't breathe. He can't breathe. So I'm literally running out the room at this point in time. I'm running out the room, frantically crying and screaming and carrying on because of the fact that this man cannot breathe and he was disconnected from the vent. So I find my instructor and I say, you know, I need you to come here and help, 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 help because he can't breathe. That was my words. He can't breathe. She gonna sit there and say, first of all, and you don't first of all me, you know, that's, that's something you don't do. I'm, I'm one of those, even today, I'm like, first of all, but you don't first of all me. So she's like, first of all, we need to remember our ABCs. And if you know, ABCs is airway, breathing, circulation. And I was like, I know that. I said, the problem is he, he can't breathe, breathing, let's go. Airway, let's go, let's go and let's go now. We don't have time to discuss this. So she's like, well, actually we do have time to discuss this. I was like, no, we don't. So I grabbed her by her hand. <laughs> I drug that lady down the hallway to this patient's room. Now, mind you, when we got there, the tech had already put everything back together and he was fine, but I didn't know that. And so she was just, the tech was like, I told you I had this. And I was like, but I didn't know. I didn't want some, I didn't want this man to die on me being a nursing student. I didn't know what to do. So that had happened. And so then she comes to the room and she gets those piercing blue eyes. Like I said, she was just like, is this what you called me in here for? You called me in here because he was disconnected from the vent and he's clearly fine right now. This is in front of the patient and this tech that she did this, you know, did this. And so then I'm like, first of all, you're not going to reprimand me right here. When I said that, oh my gosh, I, I just realized like I shouldn't have said that. 
But I mean, I was right. You know, you're not gonna reprimand me right here in front of in front of these people. Was I wrong for leaving the room? She said, first of all, you should have never left the patient's room. When there's a, was there when there's an emergency, you leave, you stay with the patient, and you push the call light. And so here we are going back and forth. I said, you know what? You're right. However, my initial reaction was to do what I did. I don't say I'm right for it, but it is what it is. Now, now that he's better and he's okay, we could have took this conversation outside or outside the, you know, to a private area. And she was like, we're going to have this conversation right now. And I'm like, no, we not. No, we not. And I don't know where I got the balls to be talking to this, this professor like this. I don't even know how, where that come from because that is who I am. And if you watch my videos long enough, you know, that is who I am. I'm going to say what I have to say. But when it comes to somebody taking, you know, someone giving me my grade, I know how to kind of, you know, be humble and just keep my mouth shut and just keep it moving. But that day I thought that man was going to die. So anyway, as the day went on, I had another situation. And it was where, it was where, um, the patient had used the bedpan. It was a woman and there was this, this white sediment floating in the urine and I couldn't figure out what it was to save my life. So of course I run back to go get her. This wasn't an emergency. So therefore I didn't feel like I, I knew I could leave the patient because I knew she was safe. She comes back and I already put the bedpan, the bedpan in the bathroom. She said, you call me in here because there's toilet tissue. That's toilet tissue. You didn't see the broke up toilet tissue. When I tell you I was so embarrassed, I was so, and when I looked at it again, I'm like, it is toilet tissue. Um, but I'm like, ah, oh, this is, this is a terrible day. This is just a effing terrible day. She said, you know what? You clearly don't have your stuff together. And I, I mean, honestly, I just didn't know what had came over me that day. I mean, I had my stuff together in the sense that I was prepared for clinical or whatever, but I was just so nervous and the things had, with that first situation, everything after that went downhill. Well, after that happened, this is too much information, but after that happened, then I ended up, um, this is probably now only about two o'clock in the afternoon. After that happened, I ended up starting my cycle and that woman stressed me so bad. It caused me my, my cycle to start. And we had to wear all white. So we wore literally white from top to bottom. And I was not prepared for it. And so she was just like, you know what? Uh, well, a student had brought to my attention that I had messed up my clothes. And so I said, I'm going to need to go home because I got to, you know, I got to, I got to change. She was like, well, if you go home, you consider yourself have a clinical onset and you're going to fail this course. And I'm like, what did I do to this woman to make her to make her want to act like this? But I could not walk around with soiled pants. So I was prepared to take this on up to the um to the director of nursing if I had to. I did have a bad day, but I was not per se disrespectful the whole day. I just didn't appreciate her her um yelling at me in front of that patient and that tech, you know, and then I was having and, and then of course that made the day go bad from there on out. So as the day went on and that happened to me, she said, you do what you have to do. She said, you should come to clinical prepared for things like this because as a woman, I'm sure this is not the first period that you've ever had. And I mean, though she was right, but I just wasn't prepared because it was a, probably a whole week early. And I think she didn't stress me to death where it came on and messed up my clothes and I didn't have a change of clothes. Now, blessed believe even today, even today, I'm a nurse now who carries all my products at all times, no matter what, have a change of clothes in the car because of that situation right there. But at the end of that clinical day, or actually I had to go home early, but uh, so the next day um, she had sent me an email saying that you will need, or actually that night, that you will need to report to my office on whatever morning it was at whatever time it was. And she said, I do not think you're equipped to be a nurse. And she said, and because you don't have it together, you obviously don't know how to, um, to, to handle situations as they, as they come about. And as a result of this, this is your clinical unset. You do this again, you're going to be out the program or out the course, which means I'm supposed to graduate, you know, don't you know, I cried and cried and cried and cried. And I said, you know what? I, I apologized. I didn't think I was wrong, but sometimes you have to apologize even if you know that you're not wrong to save face because I, at the end of the day, I was not trying to come back and do this class again. I was needed to graduate because I had two girls to take care of by myself. 
So with that being said, um, I, you know, she never overturned that unset. She knew she was wrong, but she never overturned that unset. So I ended up with my first clinical unset because of the fact that I ran out of a patient's room. Her words were, you ran out of a patient's room, so you left the patient. Um, that's kind of considered abandonment was her words. Now, I really don't consider abandonment. Should I left? No. But I'm considered abandonment. I didn't just leave the whole hospital and not tell nobody where I was going. I was just so scared. I didn't know what to do. And there was actually somebody in there with him, which was the tech. Um, it, was, it just wasn't me. But she she gave me a rush. She wrote me up for patient abandonment, for being unprofessional, which that part of probably was true, for not being prepared for clinical. Now, me, me starting my cycle has nothing to do with me being prepared for clinical. I, well, in my mind, in my mind, things like that happen to women. It's okay. Even for my students, when we have stuff like that happen, I have products for my students. I'm like, okay, it may not be what y'all use, but you know, here's something to kind of get you through. Um, cause stuff like that happens. It really happens. And so I got my first clinical onset. I learned a lot from that. What I learned about from that situation is sometimes you wrong and sometimes you not wrong, but you still get in trouble for it. And I had to sign the paperwork. Because it's like, do you want to graduate or do you not? Do you really want to fight this and have to come back? And back then, we only took students once per year. So you had to wait for that class to come back around again whenever it came back around again. That's just how it was. Now in our program, now we teach everything every single semester. And we accept students every single semester. But back then, it was like, it was 80 students per year. So I had to wait. I would have had to wait another year for that class to come back again. So sometimes, you know, you know, use me as a lesson learned. You have to save face sometimes. Sometimes it's not your fault. But just take the blame so you can keep it moving. I never had respect for that woman till this day. And again, now I've been a nurse for 15 years. And if I ever saw her, you know, even today with them piercing blue eyes, I would turn and walk the other way just to, so I didn't have to talk to her. Because she was that kind of person. I have been doing, and I honestly, when I, as a nurse, I do not do that to my students. I do not do that to my students. I don't ever want them to feel. Now, I'm, I'm very difficult. I'm very difficult. Not difficult in terms of making sure that you know what you need to know. But I'm not difficult in the sense of giving you a hard time. And I will not reprimand you in front of patients um, or other students. I will pull you to the side to say, okay, this is not correct. We need a, we need a corrective action and, and that we need it now. Um, I do compliment in, in public, though. I will say that. I've learned that you compliment in public, you criticize in private. And that kind of helps build and facilitate that rapport between you and your students. So I learned a lot from her. Not good. Well, not nothing good. I learned what not to do, shall I say. So sometimes in nursing, you have to learn what not to do. And to sometimes take it with a grain of salt and keep it moving. That's exactly what I did. That was my first and only clinical onset. I did graduate that year, um, that that semester from nursing school when I went on with my life. And, and, and again, fast forward, here we are 15 plus years later, or yeah, 15 plus years later, I am now pursuing my doctoral degree. I'm going to be finished in May of 2020. That's the same person who told me I wasn't cut out to be a nurse. She amongst a lot of people who told me I was not cut out to be a nurse. So do not let things like that, like clinical onsets, do not let things like, I mean, especially if you, now if you were wrong, you were wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Just correct your correct whatever it is and keep it moving. Um, but sometimes you get wronged in certain situations and it has nothing to do with you. It has a lot to do with them. It's a reflection of them, not of you. Some people don't want to see you succeed. And let's just say what I look like compared to, I said she had piercing blue eyes. And, and so that probably gives you, most minorities don't have, most don't have naturally piercing um, blue eyes. So... And she was an older woman at that. So there's sometimes some people don't want you around because they don't think that you are a fit for whatever they think you're a fit for. But here I am proving her wrong. I'm very proud to be doing so. But I tell you that story sticks with me to this day. Um, to this day, I tell my students, do not run and leave your patients out the room. Make sure you stay with your patients, push the, push the call light and somebody will come to you. Don't leave them by themselves type of thing. But I learned a lot. You know, here I am. I want you all to be encouraged, be empowered to know that, you know what, if you're having some difficulties with your classes, having some difficulties with your instru instructors, that this too shall pass and that you'll, you'll do fine. And don't let anybody steal your joy and make you think you're not cut out to do something because of the fact that you made one or two mistakes. Because guess what? I've made even more mistakes since I've been a nurse. And I've learned from those mistakes. No, nothing killed anybody. 
I've had made mid, I've made mid errors before. Um, I, you know, forgot to do an intervention before. I have forgot to do certain things. I've went home and realized I still had, I still haven't did something I was supposed to be doing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't do that. You know, that's the nature of nursing and how it is. It's, it's very taxing and difficult for us to do. So just be mindful that this too shall pass and you'll be just fine. And I want to encourage you that, you know, if you're in nursing school and you're struggling and you got that clinical unsat for no reason or you got reprimanded for no reason, just sometimes think about, is it really me? Did I do something wrong? And if you did do something wrong, correct it. If you did not um, and it repeats itself, then you may need to go talk to somebody about it. Um, but also just know that you just sometimes have to get through a situation because sometimes some people don't want to see you succeed. So with that being said, I am going to end this video right here. Thank you all for watching. Um, until the next time, you all take care and bye-bye.